Hello chess fans! With this video, I start a series of videos on chess composition. In this initial video, you'll have a chance to solve the problem known as the immortal problem, and the second problem, which was inspired by the first and was composed more than 100 years after it. So let's start with the immortal problem, composed in 1856 by Conrad Bayer. White starts and checkmates in 9 moves. I'll give you a tip. With the first move, white deflects black queen and starts the deadly attack. After queen deflection, each move comes with check. White sacrifices all pieces in order to surround black king with its own pieces, so that it cannot move, after which the only remaining white pawn checkmates. You can pause the video and try to find the solution. So, the queen on f7 is defending the king, so it's important to deflect it. So white sacrifices the rook in order to do it. Rook b7. So the queen is pinned, so the only way is to accept the sacrifice. Queen takes b7. And now white starts the deadly attack. First the bishop is sacrificed. Bishop takes g6 check. King takes g6. Now the knight is under attack, but it's sacrificed too. Queen g8 check. If king h5, then queen g4 would be checkmate. That's why uh, black must accept the sacrifice of the knight too. King takes f5. Queen g4 check, king e5. Now the king is right in the center of the board, and it doesn't have many squares to move. d6, d5 and d4 are under white king's control. On e6 and f6 there are black pawns, so these squares are also inaccessible for black king. And now white will start the construction of the cage. Actually the half of the cage is already constructed. But f5, f4, and e4 uh, still needs to be constructed. Uh, so you will see how white achieved that. Queen h5 check. Now it's time to take away f5 square. If f5, then a checkmate in two moves would follow. Queen h8 check and checkmate. That's why black must play rook f5. So now on f5 there is also a black piece. Now there are only two squares left, f4 and uh, e4. That's why f4 check. Now it's time to take away f4 square. Black can capture on f4 either by bishop or by knight. If knight captures, then just rook e4 check, now taking away e4 square too. And the only move is uh, capturing on e4. Now you see the construction of the cage is finished and d4 would be checkmate. That's why after f4 check, black captures with a bishop. And now rook e4 check doesn't work, because after d takes e d4, it's not checkmate, because the knight controls d4 square. And knight takes d4, and black is winning. That's why it's important to eliminate the defender of d4 square first. And in order to do it, the queen is sacrificed. Queen takes e2 check. And after bishop takes e2, now this variation works. Rook e4 check. D takes E, the construction of cage is finished, and the only remaining uh, pawn checkmates the king. D4 checkmate. Now the second problem. The second problem was composed in 1967 by Alexander Kazantsev and has a similar idea. After the initial five moves, white sacrifices every piece with check and checkmates black king with a pawn. You can pause the video and think. So the first move is e7, threatening to promote and uh, get uh, decisive material advantage. That's why black must prevent this. And the only way to do it is knight a3 check, king b6. Now if queen a4 taking under control the promotion square, it just uh, takes under control the square, but it doesn't eliminate the pawn itself. And just by playing knight d5, white would consolidate and uh, would be very active and uh, there would be nothing black uh, would be able to do in order to stop the promotion, to prevent the promotion. For example, white can play knight f6, taking under control e8 square and promote. That's why after king b6, knight c4 check followed. And after king c5, now queen a4. And now we can see the idea. After rook takes b4, attacking both the queen and the knight, queen a7 check followed. It's also double attack, attacking the pawn. And now the pawn would be eliminated. 
king takes c4, queen takes uh, e7. So black achieved what he wanted, the pawn is eliminated, but now white starts the deadly attack. As you see, the rook is attacking actually the king. There is very unpleasant x-ray, but between the king and the rook there are three pieces, the knight, the bishop, and the king. And now white, with each move, will move away one of these pieces with tempo. So first the knight is moved away. Knight g6 check. It's also the fork, so black must accept the sacrifice. f takes g. Now the bishop. f6 check. And again, it's double attack. So in order to keep the uh, queen, uh, black must accept this sacrifice too. Queen takes f6. And now, finally, the king moves. And it's check. And the king plays a very important role on d5 in the center, controlling very important squares, e6, e5, and e4. You will see uh, the, how important it will be. So, the only move is king g5. And now, as you see, as in the first um, problem, the half of the cage is already constructed, but there are still some squares left. So, h4 check. King f5. Now, it's time to take away g4 square, that's why g4 check. Now the pawn captures, and finally f4 square. Rook f4 check, of course immediately e4 check would be a terrible mistake, because the king would escape through f4, so it's important first to take away f4 square. Rook f4 check, rook is sacrificed too, and after bishop takes f4, now e4 is checkmate. Hit the like button as it's very important for the channel growth and see you in next videos.